Today we're going to take a look at the newly updated 2022 Honda CBR500R. We'll talk about where this 471cc sport bike fits into Honda's current sport motorcycle lineup and we'll dive into its specs and features, as well as explain what Honda changed for this year on the CBR500. Plus we'll start it up so you can hear what she sounds like and a lot more as we go over everything you need to know about one of Honda's most affordable sport bikes. But first, if you guys find any info in this video helpful, please take a second and hit the like button. Liking the video and throwing a comment below really helps with growing this channel through YouTube's algorithm, which in return helps me create more videos, and I really appreciate the help. So first up, where does the CBR500R fit into Honda's current CBR sport bike lineup? Let's quickly run through them. Your first option is the single cylinder CBR300R that starts at $48.99, and then you step up to the twin cylinder CBR500 we're looking at today that bumps you up to $71.99. Then your next step up is where you double those cylinders again and that gives you the high RPM scream a lot of us love with the CBR650R coming in at $97.99. Then if you want to double or triple the amount of R's at the end of their name, you have a few more options, but that's leading us away from the sports segment and into the super sports segment of bikes, and I've got other videos where we cover those models if you'd like to learn more about them. And now that we've got that out of the way, let's jump into some more info on the CBR500. Now, do you have any options when buying this bike? Well, kinda. In 2021, Honda removed the option of choosing between standard or ABS, so that's one option off the table as this bike comes standard with Honda's anti-lock braking system. How about options when it comes to colors? Surprisingly, you do, unlike many other models from Honda. You have this color that's called Sword Silver Metallic, and to say it has metallic in it would be an understatement. I tried to capture just how much it pops in the light, but this is one you definitely have to see in person to appreciate. And then you have the classic red that they like to call Grand Prix Red. It's also sold in other corners of the world in this matte gunpowder black metallic option too. Personally, I'm a sucker for red when it comes to a CBR, but which is your favorite? Or should Honda go back to the drawing board with these paint options? Now let's jump into the chassis and suspension. It's got a 35 millimeter diameter steel diamond tube mainframe with an updated upper and lower triple clamps to hold the new inverted 41 millimeter Showa SFF-BP fork setup. Sadly, it's still not adjustable, but this is a significant upgrade over the previous conventional fork, and it's bringing in 4.7 inches of travel. While out back, it's sporting the same Pro-Link design that Honda uses on countless bikes, with a single shock that has new damping and spring rate settings for this year to match the new front fork setup. Thankfully, you do have adjustability here when it comes to spring preload, and it's packing 4.7 inches of travel as well, which leads us to another one of the changes for this year, its swing arm. It's lighter thanks to dropping from 2.3 millimeters to 2 millimeters thick, packing a hollow cross member, but it is stiffer rotationally while allowing more flex laterally to improve overall handling when you're playing in the twisties. Then we head over to the wheels, which is another corner of the bike Honda changed up for this year. Still 17 inch in size, but with a lighter five spoke design. And when it comes to removing weight, rotational mass is one of the most significant areas you can pull it from. And those wheels are wrapped in the same sizes as before with a 160, 60 out back. And then the standard for most sport bikes up front, a 120, 70. And helping slow down those wheels are another one of the big updates for this year, and that's the addition of a second brake up front. Instead of a single 310 millimeter disc like before, it now has dual 296 millimeter rotors with a set of radial mounted two piston Nissan calipers, which are also shared with the CB500F. Today's video is sponsored by Monimoto, and if you're like me, I had no idea about this product until they reached out to me. It's a super small wireless GPS tracker that you can hide just about anywhere on your motorcycle, ATV, side-by-side, -side, or scooter. So that way if someone tries to steal one of your toys, Monimoto not only sends you a push notification through the app, but they also call you so there's less likelihood of you missing the alerts sent to your phone. Then you can follow it up and track its location all through the app, and battery life isn't something you need to worry about, as they'll last up to a year. If you'd like more info on the Monimoto 7, check out the link below, and thanks again to Monimoto for sponsoring small YouTubers like myself, so we can continue creating content for you guys. While in the rear, you've got a single 240mm disc with a one-piston caliper, and like we mentioned earlier, this bike comes standard with Honda's two-channel anti-lock braking system. Wheelbase remains the same at 55.5 inches and all of the other measurements around the bike from its rake and trail to ground clearance and so on haven't changed but the seat height is 0.2 inches taller now. 
coming in at 31.1 inches for the CBR500R. While its curb weight stays the same for this year at 423 pounds, putting it right in the middle when compared against its other 500 class siblings. However, with Honda pulling weight here and adding it there with some of these changes, its overall weight bias has now changed with more of that weight leaning towards the front of the bike. And next up, let's get into the engine and drivetrain. It's sporting a 471cc liquid cooled 20 degree dual overhead cam 8 valve parallel twin cylinder engine that pumps out right at 47 horsepower at 8600 RPM and 31.7 foot pounds of torque at 6500 RPM. Now some of you may be thinking, that's it? But that's where you have to keep in mind there's more to it than just peak horsepower and torque numbers at the end of the day. I mean this isn't a high strung super sport bike. Could it make more power? 100%. But then that would kick this bike out of its class that it's licensed for in other corners of the world and that would affect its sales drastically. So it's a fine line for Honda to walk on that front. And depending on the style of bike you're coming from though, this bike may surprise you with how peppy it is. I'm getting sidetracked though so let's get back on topic. This engine was originally developed back in 2013 for the CBR500R, CB500F, and CB500X Trio and is now used in the Rebel 500 and soon to be possibly CL500 Scrambler and NX500 too, meaning Honda spared no expense in the development of this package so it could be used for years to come in many different packages. Its crankshaft pins are phased at 180 degrees with a primary couple balancer that sits right behind the cylinders, close to the bike's center of gravity, while the primary and balancer gears use scissor gears to help reduce noise. Its crankcases use centrifugally cast thin walled sleeves with an internal design that reduces the losses that can occur with a 180 degree firing order. Plus its cylinder head uses roller rocker arms and you have a shim tight valve setup that allows for them to be as light as possible for lower valve spring load and reduced friction. And in an effort to reduce friction even more, you also have a silent SV cam chain that's had its surface of its pins treated with vanadium to reduce friction through its increased protection against dust. Also for this year, Honda redesigned the radiator to shape some weight up front and it's sporting a new tune to help dial in its performance even more. And we could geek out even more on this engine, but I'll save those of you that don't want to hear about that stuff. And for those of you that do enjoy the nitty gritty details like that, check out HondaProKevin.com. And helping you put this bike's power to the ground is a buttery smooth 6B transmission that's helping turn a 520 chain with a 15 and 41 tooth sprockets. You also have an assist slipper clutch that helps reduce the clutch pull and helps keep the bike under control during deceleration. And thanks to Honda striving to build the most economical engines possible, this setup won't break the bank to maintain, as you can see here from the maintenance schedule in the owner's manual. Now American Honda doesn't advertise fuel economy numbers like they used to on most models, but this CBR500R is rated at 67 miles per gallon from Honda and paired up with its 4.5 gallon fuel tank. If we do a little math, that puts your range right around the 300 mile mark before you're pushing it. And now let's bounce around the bike and touch on a few different things. You've got an LCD screen for your gauges that packs an adjustable shift light and gear position indicator, but you also have the usual odometer, trip meter, fuel consumption, and so on. Now we've already covered some of the changes for this year to the CBR500R, but that's not all of them. Honda also went to work on the aluminum foot pegs and removed the rubber grips on them, helping shave off 3.7 ounces. Plus, if you have an eye for details, you may have noticed that that front fender is different for this year as it's carried over from its big brother, the CBR650R. And that's not the only part making its way over either, with the brighter LED headlights from the 650R making their way over to the CBR500R now. And matching that setup are more LED lights all around the bike from the turn signals to the tail light. Now, do you have any storage on this bike? As is the case with most sport bikes, not much, but hey, it's more than what you get with its brother, the CB500X. So if you're going to need somewhere to throw stuff that won't fit in here, you're definitely going to need to look into some of the accessory options when it comes to tank bags or trunks, and I'll have some of them linked below. Which leads us to our next point, accessories. And Honda makes a few things from a seat cow to heated grips and a 12 volt accessory socket, but for most things, you'll have to go aftermarket. And for those of you that are curious about what Honda puts in this compartment, you've got your owner's manual and this little baggie here that holds your toolkit. And what's stashed in the baggie? Yup, an Allen wrench. Wow. Now let's start it up and show you what she sounds like in stock form and then we'll come back for a few more things.
And that's the new 2022 Honda CBR500R. What do you guys think about the new changes for this year? Do you think they're worth a $200 price increase over last year? Plus, what do you think Honda needs to change next to really bring this bike to the next level, while still being an affordable option at the end of the day, and one that makes sense as a step between the CBR300R and more powerful inline four-cylinder models that you get into after this bike? Let me know what you're thinking down in the comments section and I'll be joining in on the conversation too. Thanks again for watching and supporting all of this. I really appreciate it guys and we'll see you in the next one. But first, I want to take a quick second and say thank you to Southern Honda Power Sports for opening their doors to me and allowing me to come pick through their inventory for these videos. They are a massive Honda Power Sports dealer here in Chattanooga, Tennessee with tons of inventory from new Hondas to used Harleys and everything in between that they sell to people from all over the USA. So check out the link in the description below and head over to their website to see if they can save you some money on your next toy.